Down the ways of a thousand shipyards, American yachtsmen have launched nearly half a million pleasure boats. Today, under one flag, a tremendous number of these boats are helping to win the war. As part of the Coast Guard auxiliary, these boats and men are fighting submarines and sabotage by patrolling our coasts and vital waterfronts. Their voluntary work releases the larger armed vessels of the Coast Guard for combat duty at sea. The flag of the auxiliary is the banner of seaworthy boats and trustworthy men. Men who believe with the Coast Guard in safety and security at sea, who sail their boats for American victory. Wars are won with good equipment and trained men, so the standards are high for auxiliary vessels, and the training is thorough for the men. They study navigation, piloting, buoy systems, motor mechanics, and rescue work. Experienced men, usually officers of the flotilla, pass on a knowledge born of their own years of practical work afloat. Experience, too, teaches that operations at sea must be closely coordinated. Therefore, communications is an important part of training. In addition to sending key technique for fixed lights, radio, or telegraph, auxiliary men learn to use directional blinker guns. These ingenious guns were designed and built for auxiliary use by one of its own members. Because flags speak the language of ships at sea, each member of the auxiliary must be able to send and receive semaphore. These seagoing civilians spend long hours learning the practical arts of the sailor so that they, like the Coast Guard, will be always ready. Individual proficiency must be achieved, but the auxiliary as an organization must also be ready for fast emergency action. First, key men are notified, who start a system which has long been in readiness. Then the call flashes to all auxiliary members, with boats in the mobilization area. Time is the vital factor. How many boats can reach a given point in what length of time? How many men can be called on a busy morning in the middle of the week? How many can answer a call to what might be an American Dunkirk? Once the call is out, how long will it take the men to get to their boats? the coast, a fast cabin cruiser poses the most important question. When the boats arrive, how quickly and efficiently will they find these make-believe survivors? A flotilla surgeon is ready with complete emergency medical equipment in his own fast-moving floating hospital. He's the first one out and the last one back, just as he is ashore. At a dozen yacht basins in the mobilization area, this same scene is taking place. Hundreds of auxiliary men in their boats shove off to rendezvous for orders about which they still know nothing. And at two inlets, miles apart, somewhere on the coast, just three hours after the call, the men report for their orders to proceed. Three hours from death to action, for over 300 men on nearly 100 boats heading out to sea. Miles away, a second column sails a parallel course, straight out from shore to form two living walls with the survivors between them.
At a point several miles offshore, the two lines of boats turn to meet each other, forming a huge sweep with which to scour the ocean right up to the beach. This is where keen sight really counts in finding tiny log survivors in the choppy offshore waters. These tests of ability, observation, and seamanship are preparing auxiliary boats and men for the real thing. This time, it's only a few dozen logs to be picked up. But next time, who knows? What the Coast Guard does know is this. The auxiliary is ready. It's standing by in ports and harbors all over America, waiting for a call to action. While they stand by, they're not idle. They're bringing themselves to the standards of the regular Coast Guard, and they're doing it now. The maneuver completed, the boats report for dismissal. But more important, most of them report with results. But not all the auxiliary boats were mobilized, because the regular patrol work must go on. Being civilians, auxiliary men can't force another boat to stop to be identified, no matter how suspicious it looks. Patrol boats can report by ship to shore telephone to the nearest Coast Guard station, where an officer can give them instructions and speed help on its way. When a Coast Guard petty officer steps aboard, an auxiliary vessel hoists the Coast Guard ensign and is empowered to enforce federal laws at sea. These high-speed boats are kept as troubleshooters, ready to leave in a hurry when a patrol boat calls. An expert signalman relays the last known course of the unidentified vessel to the fast pursuit boat, and the chase is on. Coast Guard Auxiliary, civilians serving their country at sea. For many men, auxiliary training has opened the way to service for themselves and their boats in the Coast Guard Temporary Reserve, where they will work as a part of the Coast Guard. Many of them served their country during the last war. All of them, the officers and men of the Coast Guard and the Auxiliary, are determined to do all in their power to help America win today. <laughs> <laughs>